Hi y'all, today's video I'm going to show you how to unbox and assemble my new Oklahoma Joe's Ryder DXL 1200 Generation 2 Smoker. The first step we're going to do today is we're going to open and unbox all the equipment out of the box that came in. Now one of the things I make very very clear is you need at least two people to do this. So I have my son with me today. He's helping me out. All right, so we got the lid off. So right up here on top, we have our screws and such. They're all labeled, it makes it real easy. And we have our owner's manual, how to install. How to, and I will go through this as we get to the parts, but we're gonna get everything unboxed right now. Hi y'all, Don here with Southern Backyard Cooking. If you're enjoying my video, please make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. And don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. All right, one of the first things I want to talk about is this is the little um, screws and nuts and bolts and everything. On the back side, it's labeled. It tells me how many and what the number, like this is B's, these are C's, C's. And here are the instructions. Now the instructions got a nice picture on it, but for example, this is installing the controller on all it says is some parts may contain sharp edges, especially as noted in each assembly step. Wear protective gloves if necessary. The next step, again, just a picture. Uh, so that's one of the areas, one of the reasons why we really need to watch the video so that you can follow along and maintain what you uh, need to do in each step. All right, the first step is we got to put our controller board on right here and we use four of the C screws. Okay, so when we're looking at this, my thermostat is not connected, so I want to make sure I connect it and make sure it snaps into place. Then I'm gonna make sure that it's right side up. The probes right here are on the bottom. I'm gonna fit it in there. Make sure all my wires and everything are inside like such. Now I'm gonna have the four holes here and I am just going to start one of these screws. Just got to get it aligned properly first. One thing you want to do with this is you want to do it with your fingers so that you don't cross thread anything. Then once you get the first one in, the others go in pretty easily. Over here, I only have one. All right, so now I got all those in place. Now I want to tighten it down. And I want to tighten down snug. Step three is we want to remove everything from inside. And as you can see on the inside, we've got two zip ties. We're gonna to need to cut those out. So for our next step, I closed everything up. I've got everything out here. We want to turn it on its back. So what I'm going to do is, with the help of my son is I'm going to lay it up here on my table and we're going to put it on the back. All right, so our next step now that we have it up on the side and we have it where we can get to the bottom is we're going to install our bucket mount and basically this has got this part right here which is a cord holder goes toward the back and has four c screws lining up the first screw and these are real easy to see so they're pretty easy to line up okay so you can see i got the top screws in now i'm going to work on the bottom screws the bottom screws of course I'm going to have to tilt it back some to get to those. All right, so I did the bottom two screws and I snugged those up. Uh, my son actually had to tilt it back for me 
to make sure I could get those. So I'm gonna tighten these top two. And again, I want these snug now that I have them st all started. Okay, our next step is to install the probe compartment box. And you can see this is rounded and it mounts to these four holes that are right up underneath here, here and here. So once I get it in there, so I'm lining that first screw up with the hole and want to get it started. Got to be square and straight. And get it oh, about three quarters of the way in. I'm going to do the same thing on this side over here. And now I'm going to mount the last two. Our next step is going to be to mount the legs. And to do this, we actually need to pick this up and we need to put this side down on the table. So we're gonna lift this up and that way we can work on the legs. We do not want to ever, this handle over here, we never wanna grab this in picking this thing up or the hopper lid. All right, so now we have it up on its side and we're ready to put our legs on. So the first thing I want to do on my legs is I grab these two. You have two different pairs. This is the first one we're going to put on. We're actually on here. The first thing we're going to do is put, we're going to put the wheels on. And it has a nut at the top here. We're just going to finger tight them. The whole idea behind this is we can actually get in here and uh, level a little bit with this. All right, so our next step is we're gonna put these bolts right into the screws. And on the inside, I want them to barely flush up. And then they just slide on. And then I'm just gonna finger tighten them, just barely get a little snug. That's all I wanna do on those. Okay, this is our legs that go up underneath the hopper and the controller. So again, I'm gonna put my screw in there and I want it to be, on the inside, I want it to be just flush. Now, one of the things these have to do is they are gonna to have to go like this and this part out. Just barely tighten it up, okay? because the wheels go here. Our next step is we're gonna install the bottom shelf. And what we need to do is we wanna get it in between. And we have these four screws. And I believe these are uh, screw A. And so we wanna go through all the way through on both sides. And then we have our little nut. All right, now that I have the shelf on, we wanna tighten the the shelf up. Now before I tighten these top four bolts on, I'm gonna set it down, but before I can do that, I need to put the wheels on. So the wheels, I just take, put them on, get it all the way through. I have a washer and a cotter pin. And that's what holds them in place. Okay, so now we're gonna set it down and then we're gonna tighten these top posts up. It's a heavy thing, let me tell you. So we're gonna tighten those up and the reason I wanted to set it down is that way all the weight on this gets on these posts and make sure it's all the way seated. All right, our next step is we're gonna install the front towel rack and tool rack. So we have our assemblies. Basically, first thing these do is they're just gonna go in there and then we're gonna put some screws up and washers from the bottom. But before we tighten them down, we wanna put these, these units on and we want to come with this open on the bottom toward the smoker okay so i just lift up one side and put them all in okay so we get two of the c screws and two of the d washers i'm going to go ahead and put the washers on the screws and these are going to go just right in the bottom And I'm just going to tighten them just finger tight for right now. Once we get them both in, then we'll snug them up tight. Kind of move it around. Make sure you get them tight and good and tight. 
The next thing we're going to do is put the side rack on. We're going to use the same two C screws and D washers and it also just slides in these two slots and we'll put the screws on those. All right, the next thing we want to do is put on our handle. The best way to realize which way it goes is the Oklahoma Joe's logo should be where you can read it. So it's going to actually angle toward the down. And we're using again four of the C screws. And I'm just putting one in. I'm going to have him, my son, hold the other side and put one in. We're going to put the top ones in first. And like anything else, we want to make sure we're getting them going in straight. And we want to get it about three quarters of the way in. And then put our bottom ones in. And once we get all four of them in, then we'll tighten them down. So this is what those screws look like once they're tightened down. This is how all my tool racks are, again, with the slot toward, toward the back. Okay, our next step we're gonna do is install our chimney stacks. We have two of them, one on each side. The way you, we do this is we open it up and we're gonna put these in from the underside and the rounded part goes toward the rear. We put them through and hold them and then we close this back down. We have our three D screws. We're just gonna get one of them started. Screw it down, not tight, but pretty close to all the way. That way it kind of holds it in place. And we're gonna get our other screws lined up. And once we have all three of them in, then we'll tighten it down. Okay, our next step is to install the rain caps. It has a screw built in, so it goes right in the center. We have a nut that's already welded on there. We go and line it up and turn it. And at this point in time, we're gonna not tighten it down, but screw it down to where it's kinda snug. We can adjust these as needed. Our next step is to install our ash cup. The one big mistake that you will always make on this is tightening it tight. Have it up there, do not even finger snug it. But if once you get a finger snug, back it off an eighth of a turn or so. Otherwise, you will not be able to get it off. So this goes right down in the center. All right, so here's where our ash cup. We're gonna take this and line it up and we're gonna start turning it. And once it catches, now, again, don't tighten it tight, 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 like I just did there. Back it off somewhat. You want it on there kind of loose. Okay, you don't want it tight, because if it's too tight, you will not get it off. All right, now we have our two rack hooks. Again, they go right in here. And again, we have our two C screws and our two D washers. And we are just going to Screw it in, and these, because they're not attached to anything else, just we can screw them on and get them tight. What these rack hookers are for is if I don't have to use both these racks inside, I have a place right here that I can store them. I don't have to find some other place. The to next do. thing we're going to do is install the heat shields, and we're going to put those in here. We're going to do. There's three of these. Okay, so the first one has got these two little notches on it, and they go and line up here and here. Just like that. Real simple. The next one has got this big arrow on it, and we want to line it up with this arrow here. So we want to line those arrows up. And when we do that, all these pins will line up. Okay, our third one. We just take it and set it right in there, right on top of it all. And now we have our racks put in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our heat distribution plate and our grease diverter. Okay, so we're gonna install this one first. It's, notice the round edge. It's actually gotta go up next to the round. So we want this on top of this rail right here. Just like that. All right, again, the rounded edge here goes against here. If you notice down in here, we got two slots. 
that's where these are gonna go. So we wanna get it in here and make sure those fit into those slots. All right, so we're gonna install the grates next. These are cast iron grates. They're already seasoned, so we don't have to do it. Okay, so we want the, the beveled edge, not the flat edge, going up. And we just basically put those in there. We grab the other side one and put it in there. And then we put our one in the middle and put it in there. All right, we have two porcelain shelves. And in here, we have four slots to where we can put our racks and adjust them to whatever height we want. And they will hold the weight. All right, our next step is take the lid off the Oklahoma Joe's bucket and this goes right down here and just slides right on there okay now when we're cooking we do not want this under there because this is plastic and it could get really hot that allows us to have our pellets bit to be dumped and it go right into our bucket so i'm gonna put that down there right now just to hold it all right so the next thing we're going to do is install our sear handle we need two of the C screws. So what we're gonna do is right up underneath here, we have an open slot. So I'm gonna push this over to where it's in the open slot. Now I wanna put this on. And then from underneath, I've gotta line these screws up. So now I'm underneath here and I'm lining these screws up. All right, so now I got this screwed in. And what this does is it opens or closed. So if I'm in smoke, the inside is closed. If I'm in sear, it's gonna open and let that flame come right through. We've got four temperature probe slots here and each of them have a rubber grommet that will keep water and trash out of them. I would suggest you keep them closed like this unless you're using them. This particular grill comes with two probes so these are the two probes and they're on this nice little accessory to where they can go right in this area here and they're out of the way okay so we're going to install the two grease buckets and they go up underneath and there's a little hook right in both the little slots Next that we're going to do is we're going to take all the paper and everything off now some of this comes off pretty easy. Just get it and peel it. Don't be in a rush and peel it too fast. That way it'll tear and then you have a bear to take off. The last sticker I've got to take off is this one in the front. Again, I know some people may not take these stickers off but it's real important to do this and make sure you do this before you ever start cooking because once it heats up these become a bear to get off okay so at this point we've got our smoker all assembled all ready to go i want to thank everybody for watching this video the best bet i can give is make sure you tune into next week's video and that's where i'm going to show you how to start up and burn off this particular smoker. And until next time, guys, y'all have a good one.